So yes, I'm uh, Peter Milden. I'm the uh, co-founder and chief operating officer of a company called Vivacity Labs. I've been going for just over six years now and um, started off answering a simple question of can we gather good data about how roads are used. But over the last three years, started to ask a slightly different question of can we quantify initially actually the benefit of road safety investment. That quickly turns into a slightly different question. So I'm sure we all know the cost benefit analysis of uh, road safety would look at the number of deaths being the most significant thing. We were then saying, well, there's a limited amount of statistics you can get on that. We were hearing in the uh, smart motorways panel earlier, there's just not enough data to get really good statistical significance out there. So saying, well, is there some precursor to a incident that we could look for and generalize and start to measure better? And the obvious answer to that is, oh, can we measure near misses? Not defined what that means yet, but could we measure that and then get a large data set to really then help with the statistical modeling of how safe different roads are so you can target your investment better? That's what we're trying to achieve. Um, our starting point was having some AI in a product that's able to produce real-time data on roads. I'll show you a little bit of that in a moment, but that was our starting point. So the first question is, how do we go about extracting near-miss data from that? And that question turned out to be a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be when we started three years ago. Then started to say, well, OK, we've detected a near-miss. Can we get some insight beyond that as well? What was the root cause of that near-miss? That kind of caused us a bit of an existential debate because we're a product-based company. Um, but when you started going down to that root cause analysis, it all started getting quite bespoke and um, sort of bespoke different for each individual location. So we had a bit of a soul search around, is the generalized approach best or do we need to always go bespoke? And I've got a question for you all at the end around the value of real time, but we'll uh, see how that goes towards the end. So yeah, to start, basically what we do and what we've done for the last six years is run a convolutional neural network and a tracking algorithm, looking at the road, detecting your cars, vans, motorbikes, trucks. In the last few months, we've cracked e-scooter, finally got the count accuracy on the e-scooter up to 98%. So I think that's finally ready to launch. Um, with this data set, we can give the path that each individual is going through that road space. So these are these lines that are being drawn around. We can put lines across the road and count when something crosses those lines. In a single camera field of view, we could put lots of count lines so we can see whether people are using a cycle lane or pavement or uh, the main road. We can look at occupancy zones, so are certain vehicle types going where they shouldn't, and indeed do things like turning counts and extract speed. So this is everything that we could already do, and there's obviously some value in that when it comes to road safety already, but it doesn't answer the near-miss question. All of that happens on a device. So this is a sensor that we've designed, it's got a GPU in the box. It is processing all of that. The video doesn't need to leave the roadside. The only thing that leaves the roadside is that anonymous data about the count or where the vehicles went. And that we've got going into a data portal so it's easy for our clients to look at. So on the near miss side of things, um, the first thing that clients started to say was, oh, can we look at the path data and see whether cyclists are in the right bit of the road, how they're interacting? And that's something that's fairly straightforward to do. But there's a big problem with that in that the convolutional neural networks that we've been using draw a 2D box around the car or the van in this case. So that's the detection from the AI. And as you'll notice, it's putting the bottom middle of that vehicle off to the right slightly. So when we put that in a perspective transform and look at the road, we think that vehicle is driving not quite in the middle of the lane. And clearly, if we're trying to assess the safety of that vehicle's position in the road, this isn't good enough. We need to do a heck of a lot better. So the first thing we said is, well, can we detect some 3D box around that vehicle, which would give us its actual position in the road? Or even better still, the amount of road that it is sweeping through as it drives along. And that suddenly um, unlocks the ability to properly assess whether a cyclist that we detected in the cycle lane was close to or not close to that vehicle. That was the first challenge, and here's the output. So we've now got a convolutional neural network. Rather than detecting a 2D box, it's adding three axes to each vehicle that goes past, a vertical, sideways, and uh, longitudinal, and can produce that sweep of the road that it's covering. And actually, we've plotted on here the dotted line of where we used to detect that vehicle based on the 2D box, and the, uh, the solid line, the white line in the middle there, where we're now detecting it. So that's problem one solved in terms of, right, we now can actually geolocate a vehicle properly within the road. Next, how do you actually define what a near miss is? 
And we started off slightly naively saying proximity, that's going to be near, miss, we're all talking about how far away something is. And we might say that that sort of path was OK, but when it got to less than, I don't know, 20 centimetres, that wasn't OK. But if one of those vehicles was stationary or parked, would that be a near miss? And I would question probably not. So we've got a big problem here is that there's no concept of speed involved in that assessment of near miss. So next we looked at something called time to collision. That basically says, well, here we've got a car and a pedestrian. If we take their current speed and um, direction, so their velocity, and map that forwards, how far in the future would it take for them to collide? And in this scenario, the pedestrian might decide to go behind the car, so they never actually, or they don't cross paths for quite a long time. That time to collision might be a good measure of safety. Works particularly well with something like rear ending, where you might have a stationary car, another car pull up behind them, and you predict at any point within their deceleration curve, if they stopped decelerating, how long before they hit the back of the car in front. So this measure works quite well in these two scenarios I've talked about here, but the vast majority of near misses never have a time to collision because their paths don't meet at some point in the future. So the metric that we've actually uh, landed on is one called post encroachment time, where you have one vehicle that does something, another one does something, and you measure the time between those two paths crossing. This seems to be the most robust method of calculating a near miss. It has a few edge cases where it falls down, in the case of the stationary vehicle being rear-ended, if they never actually hit each other, they never have a post-encroachment time. So you might need some combination of the two, but we're getting to the point now where we can actually measure some statistics about what near misses are happening. And if we define, I don't know, 0.5 seconds as your tolerable post-encroachment time, anything less than that's getting inside a human reaction time, we can start spitting statistics out at a site that says, this is the number of near misses between car and pedestrian, car and cyclist, taxi and pedestrian, taxi and cyclist, like goods vehicle and pedestrian, like goods vehicle and cyclist. Clearly, this data is dominated by the fact that there are more cars on the road than the other modes. You can start to look at the percentages within that as well and how that varies with time of day. So you've got a lot more data here than you would ever get from Stats 19 because you're getting data points every single day and multiples of them. And you can then start being a little bit more clever with that and say, well, OK, during a week, let's pick the 20 worst near misses that I found and replay the paths. Again, completely GDPR compliant. We've not recorded any video here, but we have got the path that that vehicle went along. On the left hand side, we've got an issue with this road in that the cycle lane suddenly stops. And you can see the near miss was caused by the cyclist swerving out to the right into the path of car. So that's something as a road designer we can do something about. So we could classify that as, a, OK, well, this is a near miss and there's something we can do about it. The one on the right, we've got a cyclist undertaking a car. I don't think as a designer there's much you can do about that. That's more of an educational piece. But starting to see here that we could do something with the data on top. The problem is we're now starting to look at each individual near miss to try and classify it. And unless we used some clever AI classification algorithm, it becomes a bit more of a manual task again but a heck of a lot better than watching hours and hours of CCTV footage. As I said, we could go through six months worth of data and pick the five worst or 50 worst incidents from that pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, our goal is to try and build something that is generalized and scalable. So what I mean by that is we put a single sensor up at any one location and it just does the same thing and we can compare one site to the next to the next. And post encroachment time is something we can do that with. So that's great. And actually we're at the point where Come Q3 this year, so I don't know, around September, we should be launching that as a product that will be scalable and very easy for us to deploy. In the meantime, though, we've been looking at a more bespoke approach saying, well, can we do some of this analysis that we've already got the software tools to do in a more consultative way? And that's led us to this realization that that might always be needed because every site is slightly different. So what I mean by that is we look at this nice, simple example, we've got a zebra crossing and we've got a pedestrian and a car coming along. We might have the scenario where the car goes first and the pedestrian second, or we might have the scenario where the pedestrian goes first and the car goes second that have identical post encroachment time. So on that generalized approach I was talking about, these have both been given the same hazard. Whereas actually here, we might say that the car going in front of the pedestrian on a zebra crossing is more hazardous than the other way around because it's a breakdown in terms of the rules of the road. Um, if there wasn't a uh, zebra crossing there, it might be the other way around. 
So effectively, we're saying here there might need to be some bespoke thought. And I've sort of extended that as well in saying we might want to know, did the vehicle slow down? Did it accelerate? Um, was there no change in its speed at all? These sorts of things would tell us more about the hazard and they're things that post encroachment time will never quite give us. Um, so, yeah, I think my conclusion at the moment is some degree of bespoke analysis is probably always going to be needed, but um, there's a huge amount of value as well just in getting those raw statistics out on some quantification of near miss. Finally, my question for you that I said I'd open with at the start. So this all predicates, everything I've talked about so far predicated on the concept that this is data that we gather over time and look at as designers. And the question I've got is we can produce all of this stuff in real time. We could create within a fraction of a second of a near miss happening and alert that that near miss has happened. Is that ever going to be valuable? At the moment, I'm struggling to see the value in it. Because obviously, we've got situations that we've seen before around a dynamic speed limit sign, maybe a presence detection sign if there's a cyclist there, a sign flashes up, or even something in car. But is a driver really going to be able to react to any form of feedback that's coming in those sorts of uh, half seconds of a near miss? My conclusion at the moment is no, but I would love somebody in this audience to persuade me otherwise later. Um, so in conclusion, in order to do good near miss analysis from any form of uh, video recognition, we need to be able to see the 3D vehicle because we need to get that position in the road much, much more accurate. That output can then be used to measure in a generalized way near misses, predominantly post encroachment time, but as I said, there's value in time to collision as well. This offers a GDPR compliant way of gathering this data. We don't need to record hours and hours of CCTV in order to do safety studies. And while near miss can be generalized into something like post encroachment time, I think our conclusion at the moment is that uh, some degree of bespoke analysis is going to be very useful. And then finally, if anybody thinks that real time is going to be valuable, yeah, please do come talk to me.